right, awesome. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Tom McCray, uh, and I mostly work at Mapbox, uh, which is a company that's very integrated with OpenStreetMap. Basically, it wouldn't be possible without OpenStreetMap, um, and so it's very important that it kind of wins. Um, I'm going to be talking about ID, which is a new map editor for OpenStreetMap. Um, it was developed in about the last year or so, um, and it's a bit different than what we've had in the past, both as far as kind of approach and also how it sees OpenStreetMap, um, because it's dealing with like a, a much different future than what we've had so far. Um, you can follow along uh, with this talk at that link if you have a computer or internet device. Um, and if you actually want to contribute, it's on GitHub. Um, it's a public domain license, so you don't really have to be nervous about anything. Um, since this is a thing, I think it's more appropriate to just kind of demo it, um, at least at first. Uh, and so here's what ID looks like. Um, this is a random area in North Korea. Um, North Korea isn't very well mapped. Um, and so... It's essentially your, your usual kind of experience of drawing a square, um, making the square straight, um, saying that it's a building, um, and specifying any details that you know about it, a Wikipedia page, or what it's actually used for, and so on and so forth. You know, you can fill an area with buildings. You can look at existing features, like this is a sport pitch, and it looks like a football field. Um, and if I were confident about that, I could type, um, you know, football or golf, whatever. Um, and, you know, add your basic lines. Um, and of course, roads are, are very varied around the world. Um, and so we have many different road presets. Um, this is a very confusing thing in OpenStreetMap, and so we also have an I button next to all of them, which shows you what exactly they are, with a picture of was suggested, what that is, um, when it's available. Most of these pictures are in Germany, though, so they don't apply very well to North Korea. Um, and so I'll delete this road, which isn't very well mapped, and save, add to buildings. You guys can revert this if you want. <laughs> and you can save it, um, and we have basically these buttons that I never use, but quite a few people do use, so we added them, um, which basically say, tweet, and you can tweet about your change set, and your friends can click this link and be very, very confused about what it is. <laughs> um, this is, you know, this is, we can't solve all the problems at once, um, but, but it is actually, uh, people, people do this all the time. Um, and so that's basically the, the gist of, of ID. Um, if it's not amazing, that's kind of because it's designed not to be all that scary or interesting. It's designed to be like a tool that you would feel pretty comfortable with, hopefully like MS Paint or like Photoshop. Um, and so a lot of the interface paradigms are things that are hopefully uh, kind of familiar to people who just use Google Maps or Maps in general and the UI looks like the web in general, um, because, you know, that's important. Um, and so to kind of go into a little bit more detail, um, the, the world is also very, very, very deep. Um, so we have lots and lots of presets for pretty much everything. Um, if we have a point and it's actually a grocery store or a graveyard, um, or dry cleaners, or a motorcycle dealership, as opposed to a car dealership. Um, we not only have that, but it's also uh, recommended fields. Um, it's really important that ID recommends a lot of things, because kind of the, the idea of choosing is really, really tricky. Um, the way that OpenStreetMap editors have been in the past is pretty much how the all tags menu works, in which you click plus, and you have just this empty input field that stares at you. Um, and this is kind of, you know, a problem because people will type in, like, this is a thing, and save it. Um, and then, you know, they get yelled at, but how would you ever know? Um, I would assume that there's no documentation for that. Um, here's just an animated GIF of adding a road. Um, we also do a lot of uh, kind of 
uh, Earth specific things like showing miles per hour versus kilometers per hour depending on where you are, um, showing local street names when you're adding an address point. Um, and a lot of the most important things are kind of like what, what is trendy to call invisible UI currently. Um, they're gestures, which you would kind of expect work. Um, so here, for instance, I'll draw uh, two lines, and they should be close, and so they should be connected, and you can just drag them to each other, and they connect. Um, it's kind of like a, a very useful gesture, which doesn't have a UI. It's the, inter the you know, invisible interface. Um, it's also really important that ID emphasizes people. Um, so whenever you're browsing the map, it shows you who's, who's edited the map recently. Um, it shows you a little icon of yourself in the bottom left corner. And when you save things, it warns that people will know that you saved them. Um, it's, a, it's kind of like the, the personal uh, you know, uh, accountability angle to making things correct. Um, it also supports you know, GPX, and it has help. Um, which, and this is all translated into about uh, you know, 10 or 15 languages really well, and a bunch of other pretty poorly. Um, it's basically built on tag info, um, has some interesting UI paradigms. Um, but, and not to geek out too much, but I'll talk about how it was made and why that's important. Um, so it's made in JavaScript, uh, which obviously is trendy. Um, everyone thinks that JavaScript is a really good idea. Um, the actual answer is that it's really hard to do this, and it, Flash would be easier to make faster. Um, but the thing is with JavaScript is that it's really easy to learn and easy to use. Um, let's see. And so when we use basic tools like SVG and D3, and we even do OAuth in JavaScript, it's contributable. Um, so like this is an open source project, and it's very important that other people can see it and they can actually like clone the repository and contribute to it. Um, because you know all of our times on these kinds of projects like ID are basically temporary, and you're always trying to build so that it doesn't fail in you know two years. That as soon as you leave it, nobody maintains it. Um, people know JavaScript. I'll go back. Um, and so this kind of question of like who is ID designed for? It's designed for the 90% of OSM users who sign up. Um, there really should be a who sign up at the end of this, um, because a lot of people are really okay with existing tools. Um, you know, in any industry, people become really okay with existing tools, even if they're inefficient and scary. Um, you know, you learn. Uh, but the problem with OpenStreetMap is that a lot of people sign up and they don't edit, uh, because it's really scary to edit. And a lot of times, the task that you're trying to do, like fix one house name, is really scary when your tool is made to fix coastlines and it's made to merge inflated data. And so this is what we're really thinking about. It's the, the user growth graph of OpenStreetMap. And of course, these are signups, not contributors. Um, but we have more than a million of them. And you know we have a very high fall off rate. Like The idea is that ID will hopefully make this the contributor rate rather than the sign-up rate. There's a big difference between the two. And so the point of it being contributable, the point of like it being usable by everyone is that hopefully everyone will start developing it. Um, because OpenStreetMap is a very, very global project. And basically, all these kind of very niche use cases, um, for instance, uh, people who um, live close to the pol poles, and so the Mercator projection doesn't work for them because it's not designed for the poles. It's designed for ships in 1750. Um, they can implement something like an Arctic projection and make it work um, because everyone's everyone's needs are uh, extremely diverse, but they are basically the people who need them, so they're the people who can build them best, and they also have the knowledge to build them correctly. And so uh, this is, you know, I'm, I'm a programmer. This is all Salmon, so I'm just describing what Salmon did. Um, but it's really important that ID was designed from day one, um, so it looks nice, right? Um, I think it looks nice, right? Uh, and this was not stage two. This was not stage zero. It wasn't designed before it was developed. It wasn't designed after. It was designed as it was developed. And so the code basically like works with the icons. It works with everything else in the project. 
that makes it actually friendly. Um, here are, for instance, the preset icons, and this is just one screen full of them. There are hundreds of these now. Um, here are all the cursor icons. They're designed from scratch, um, and all of this is even designed at 2x sizes for retina devices. Um, here are some of the sprites. And, you know, they're basically like really small details, like us redrawing the Twitter icon because it's kind of ugly. And, you know, adding, uh, for instance, uh, the idea of the water type is basically driven by, driven by the design. The idea of the area type, which doesn't exist. Like, let's be clear, um, this button, like, that should not exist, right? OpenStreetMap doesn't have an idea of area. But when you're designing the interface, you're like, oh, when people draw an area, they should see an area icon, and they should know that they're drawing an area. And so this kind of interface is driven by the fact that it needs to be user-friendly, rather than the fact that you know, OpenStreetMap speaks XML and has ways and nodes and so on. This matters, because uh, ID needs to seem legit. Um, let's be clear, uh, OpenStreetMap needs to seem legit. Like, and I guess the way that I'm talking about this is that like, when you go to OpenStreetMap, you need to feel like it's part of the current internet and that you're doing something useful. Um, and when it isn't like this, it's a problem because you feel like you're on an island or that you know, OpenStreetMap is just kind of like a random project that you're contributing to. And so it really matters, like the fit and finish behind this, beyond just any kind of usability level, it's more that like OpenStreetMap needs to be a thing and details like the design of ID make it a thing. The eventual goal is of course to replace Palatch 2 as the default editor for Internet Explorer 10 plus. Um, and for people who use Internet Explorer below 10 forever, they'll always use Palatch 2 forever. Um, but that's around, uh, what, 6% of traffic or so? Um, so most people will see ID. The idea is to convert more new users to editing members. Um, basically, we don't have good analytics for this right now because it's really hard to figure out you know, users. We don't want to export the user table. Um, but eventually it would just be like, oh, let's see, uh, let's push somebody with ID to find an area that needs an edit and have them do one edit. And then finally, it kind of wants to enable a new generation of OpenStreetMap tools, which I think it's already started to do. Um, it's kind of reusable, this reusable code that we've been working on, like the basic skeleton of ID, is already usable for things like creating an iPhone editor that just edits the height of buildings, or creating an editor that only adds road names. We've moved past that, beyond, uh, of course. Um, so now it has presets and details and documentation and translations and so on. It's become a thing in and of itself, but it's basically designed to be rewritten. Um, and then, of course, for the actual people who have used it and have posted on talk lists, um, 1.1 sports relations. Just throw that out there. It also supports performance. <laughs> um, and version 1.2 will also be perfect. <laughs> um, but, is, you know, there are some problems with that, that are very deep about it, unfortunately, like this performance problem, for instance, like the make it faster problem, um, for which the answer to use Canvas is not valid. Um, it's a non-trivial problem, so we're grading Chrome and Safari, we're kind of buggy in Opera, and Firefox is, uh, uh, it has room for improvement. Um, but this is actually kind of one of the more inspiring experiences that I've been through. Uh, despite, you know, being anyone who contributes to software that runs on the web, you become very disappointed with the state of the internet, because, um, you know, it's basically made of twine and glue. Um, but it improves, is the thing. Um, so here's a bug that we filed in WebKit, and it was about like uh, the markers on roads, the one-way markers, went the wrong way sometimes because somebody forgot their trig. Um, and that's actually exactly what this guy said. He was like, somebody forgot their trig. And it got fixed. And so instead of fixing this problem in ID, uh, we fixed it in Chrome. Well, they fixed it in Chrome, but we got it fixed in Chrome. 
And so like we're actually seeing real progress here, which is pretty awesome. Like high five open source community. Here's the bug trackers. Um, and note that I did not op <laughs> um, Opera doesn't have a bug tracker. Um, <laughs> it has an email address. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, the low-hanging performance fruit is mostly eaten. Um, we've already figured out uh, most of the easy things that you can do or the quick things that you can do, and we've already done them. Um, so uh, basically, if anyone wants to get a PhD, um, you should just help us finish this. <laughs> um, or you should just switch to Chrome. Um, so here's what's not next first before I do what's next. Um, Jaza. Uh, so IDE does not intend to become much more complicated than it currently is. It doesn't intend to have tons of key bindings. Um, it doesn't intend to look like a power user's tool, even if it is usable as a power user's tool. Because um, you know the most inspiring power user's tool are like the people who draw incredibly detailed portraits on DeviantArt with Microsoft Paint. Um, like this tool-centric philosophy is kind of bad. Um, it won't warn you about everything, obviously. Um, it won't have tons of text. It won't overwhelm you. Um, we want it to be the default. That's the thing. We want it to have excellent docs in every language, um, and YouTube videos, and a book. Um, we want it to integrate with the notes functionality so that people can write to-dos and see what's next. And of course, we want it to be a really useful bounding book building block, so to pull out IDs that you can do this. So that you can say, oh, I want IDs functionality, I want all the hard problems that we had to solve, I want those solved. And you can just include it. And so you can write another editor, and you can you know, do interface your way, or you can do it for a different platform. Um, we want to share it enough so that that's possible. And this has already happened a little bit. Um, here's just like, this isn't all of it, but these are pretty much all the libraries that we've written in the process of writing ID. And you can pull any of these, and some of these hard problems can just be solved for you. Um, so 2GeoJSON will just convert GPX files to GeoJSON files. Um, OSM auth will authenticate against OpenStreetMap. Um, and some of these things, like OSM auth, I wrote it, and it was a terrible experience to write. Um, and so like, ideally, it isn't for you. Um, you can just include it. It's kind of the point of open source. And then, speaking of terrible interfaces, right? Um, we also want to make it possible to have plugins for ID. Um, there are lots of things that people ask for, and just like features that are very domain specific, there are some things like chat and conflation and imagery alignment, which are really important for certain people, but we are not the people who have those needs. Um, I find it very hard to develop on projections because I live in DC which is reasonably close to the equator. Um, and so, you know, the alignment of buildings is basically correct. Um, but somebody who lives in the Netherlands knows this problem, and they know it really well. Um, you know, somebody who lives next to the dateline knows how to fix the dateline problem, or at least they feel the pain enough to want to. So it's kind of like a you tell me for a lot of the features, besides, of course, performance and bugs and documentation, which we'll fix. That's it. Uh, questions? <laughs> yep. So one model of editing is get an editor and ask them to fix their neighborhood, make everything good. Yep. The right path and the road and the names. Another is for someone who's really interested in a particular topic. I want to mock every radar station in the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, basically the, the pluggability is right here. Um, so the things that you see when you add points, um, you can change all these and you can make them extremely detailed. And so, for instance, you know, the Park Service would have just tons of kinds of trees, um, like with insane detail, like how many rings they have. And then, you know, another, another source might just have uh, just a certain kind of road or just a certain type of pavement type. And you can basically like domain specific eyes this editor in that in that fashion. I love all of the radar stations in the country. Not quickly, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Oh, why is SVG better for performance than Canvas? Uh, it's not that it's better for performance, it's that Canvas only solves half the problem. So like we could make the dis we could map make the map display very quickly with Canvas, but we couldn't make it interactable without rewriting a very significant part of the internet. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, um, so in any community, there's kind of like a little bit of unsureness um, when it becomes mainstream and when people um, have varying skill levels, but that is how the world works. Um, and so like, ideally, we, we push the question enough that OpenStreetMap kind of builds better tools for this. Um, right now, our, like, our process for reverting is just insane. And for reviewing changes is just insane. And so ID will cause that to become commonplace. Oh, the, the question was that ID will introduce a lot of noobs to OpenStreetMap who will make mistakes. What is your vision for a local data set and what is the role of the recommendation engine behind ID in this data set? Uh, you mean a local data set as in like not OpenStreetMap? Oh, okay. Um, uh, what, what's the idea for a local data set and um, the recommendation engine for this? Um, so you mean like these guys basically? Presets? Uh, yeah, so um, the, the general concept is that, I guess a really good example will be Wikipedia. Um, so when you type in an English Wikipedia page, um, It'll recommend what the what the completion is, and you can basically cross-reference data sets with this. And so, like, there's the there's the macro level of the plugin, which is the fact that we have motorcycle dealerships, and then there's the micro level of the problem, which is that like this can have a certain facet of information that can be very specific. Uh, I mean, sometimes, uh, so the question of projections and whether they're important uh, because OpenStreetMap is mostly uh, zoomed in. Um, mostly I just have projections on the mind because uh, there's a project to map um, penguins, and penguins are really close to the pole. Um, and so it, the whole idea of reprojecting just totally breaks down, and the idea of imagery totally breaks down. Um, it's more that uh, there are certain local data sets that are only in native projections, um, and also it's just a really fun problem to work on. Yep? Are you doing a mobile version of ID, and what would be the main uh, use case? Uh, yeah, um, so the main use case, like there are, would we do a mobile version of ID, what would be the main use case? Um, a mobile GIS collection already exists and, and kind of, in really large scale. Um, every county GIS department has bought like, you know, five, ten thousand dollar ArcGIS tablets or whatever. I've never seen one in real life, but I've seen them on the website. Um, and so the, the idea is that digitization works really well with pens, um, even if the idea that it's in your hands isn't that important. Um, and so the main feature of a mobile ID would be that tracing would be incredible. I mean, I like at least the idea in my mind is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here, there's this is Iran. Um, it doesn't have a geocoding component, um, so you can you can uh, either search for a place. You can go to like Denver, um, and we'll recommend Denver in Denver County. Um, or you can click the button below it, which does issue a 5 geolocation, and that brings us here. All right, I have no time remaining, so thanks.